fingernail's not supposed to bend that way. There we go. Ah! Did... What the fuck? Ah. <laughs> it's thickened water. Clear advantage, thickened water. Oh, this is only mildly thick. Okay, if the second ingredient in water is xanthan gum, something is seriously wrong. Thicket, ready to drink, made with pure art artesian mineral water. Oh, this is only rated two. This is only mildly thick. Honestly, I'm a little offended, you guys. You really think I can't handle extra thick? Nutrition innovation for dysphagia? Dysphagia is difficulty swallowing, taking more time and effort to move food or liquid from your mouth to your stomach. Well, I suppose if you sent me this, I should try it. That was the only thing in that box. That's horrifying. That was fucking disgusting. Like drinking phlegm? Ooh, you did not have to say that. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm gonna wash it down with black coffee. It, it's just slime. It just tastes like you're swallowing slime. But it doesn't taste like anything. It, and that's the worst part. If it had a taste, I would at least be able to expect something. Cannot believe that you sent me that. I don't know why. Was there more in this box? Oh, great. There's these. Uh -oh. Oh. Okay. Ah. Extra thick from Enchantment. Send a thank you note. I will definitely not be sending a thank you note, Amazon. Can you imagine the poor Amazon warehouse employee? They haven't slept in 15 hours, and they're being paid to put a single bottle of thick water in a box to send to Funny History Man. Moving swiftly along from whatever the fuck that was, uh, we have a very nicely wrapped box uh, from someone from Ohio. Uh, we got a Jane from Ohio. Never seen Jane spelled like that, but. As a matter of fact, it is. Never seen that before. Hope it's a bicycle. Okay, this works. <laughs> Look, I, I opened it. All right, well, the box definitely got to the right person. Awesome. <laughs> Look at how many stickers. I didn't even start putting stickers on my laptop case until the most recent video I filmed, which was yesterday. Outlaw, I like that one with the guy with the dog. Yeah, I believe Bigfoot sticker. <laughs> I should put these on my car. Yeah, then people can start to identify me. That would be great. Read manual. Misuse may result in injury, death, or temporal misplacement. Thank you for sending me this one. I'll definitely be utilizing that. Aw, let Pluto be a planet. <laughs> That's great. And then last but not least, by entering this space, you consent to the exposure of low levels of anti-thallium particles. I don't know where the fuck you got this selection of stickers from, but I greatly appreciate it because they're all very entertaining. Holy shit, more chalk. And I thought this was a Sephora gift card, but it is not. Dear Milo, when you dropped the fan mail address, I knew what I had to do. So I roused myself from a 1.30 a.m. YouTube stupor and started rummaging around in the spare room until I found these. These happen to be liberated from a, sorry, I have to flip to the next post-it note in this letter, from a college classroom years ago, and Lord knows why, but I have carried them around since uh, and through at least six separate moves. Oh my God. Thank you for the entertaining content. I admire how much effort you put into researching and referencing uh, in order to educate your audience. And there's also obviously this wonderful picture of a skull right behind the smut and the conspiracy theory books. This is from my home state of Massachusetts from someone named Lan. Some very uh, aesthetic stationary. Hello Milo, I love your videos. They're entertaining and educational. I was raised in a creationist family and went to a Christian school till I was 12, so I never learned anything about archaeology or evolution. I have a question though. How did Pangaea turn into the modern globe? How can land and ocean move like that? You showed an idea of what continents will look like in the future. How does that work? I'm guessing earthquakes or something with the plates? I never learned about those either, so I don't fucking know what those do, lol. It's kind of embarrassing to be almost 30 and no less uh, than grade school kids, but you and your videos have made me want to learn. Do you have any book recommendations? Uh, thank you for your time and your hard work, Lan. Firstly, Lan, thank you very much uh, for this. This is very, very sweet. Um, and as for your question, uh, it's a phenomenal question. So uh, the way that Pangaea was able to turn into the multiple continents that we know today is because of plate tectonics. You know, we, we live on a hard surface 
uh, but the uh, core of the Earth is molten, uh, meaning that it functions in much the same way as water, um, obviously on a much larger scale. So if you want to envision it as water, uh, the continents are floating on top of the magmatic center of the world, um, so they are able to move around freely. Well, when we you know, go outside and stand on terra firma, it feels like you are pretty much immovable. Uh, in reality, these giant pieces of land are equally susceptible to just floating around on top of the magmatic core. So over millions of years, um, there will be you know, different uh, interactions between the plates. So there is a subduction zone, which is when a plate slips beneath another one, um, which can cause volcanoes because the Earth's mantle is melting as it goes lower. This is present in the uh, Ring of Fire, which is the Pacific. Um, and then there is a, I can't remember what the side to side one, but it's called a slip fault um, where two pieces of plate are sliding next to one another. That's present on the San Andreas Fault in California. And then there is also um, plates moving apart, which is where new earth mantle is made. And that's happening in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, um, which is why when you see uh, you know, Africa and South America, it looks like they would fit together pretty well because that was Pangaea, those split apart, and the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is separating and creating more land. Um, so I would say uh, probably the most important takeaway from this is that don't be embarrassed that you don't know that at the age of whatever you are. Frankly, it doesn't matter. The fact that you were put in a position where you were willfully, um, you know, omit, things were willfully omitted from your education is far from your fault. Um, but it does highlight a, you know, a, a difficulty that we have always faced and we are still facing today, which is that the ability for people to learn these things can be hindered by, um, you know, implicit biases and insisting on sending your kids to a school that teaches only the things you believe. Um, so I am, I'm sorry to hear that you had that sort of upbringing, but I am very grateful and I'm very proud that you have been able to find a sort of new breath and be able to ask these questions that even if you view them as embarrassing, you want to know the answers to. That curiosity is more important than embarrassment. So Lan, thank you very much for this. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and stay curious. Okay, I've been very curious about this box since I picked it up from someone in California. Name's Steven. I'm going to assume that this is a reused box because I don't know why this would be a hat, but who knows. Jesus, fucking hell. Steven, did you take some of my batteries? If I don't find three batteries in here, Steven, you're Milo. I am enjoying your new show and I'm looking forward to watching more. Uh, this skull from my collection? Steven, you, Steven. Steven, did you kill someone, Steven? This skull from my collection reminded me of the Sahelanthropus chadensis skull, so I thought you could give it a good home. Every mad scientist needs at least one skull. The lights do work, but you might have to jiggle the batteries to get them to turn on. With respect, Steven. Steven, my respect is relying heavily on what I'm about to see in this box. Well, you're gonna suffocate him if you package him like this. <laughs> oh my god! I very much like how this skull has a neck. I think that's a really nice touch. Oh yeah, Steven. And the lights even work. See, he likes it. That's a good name. Or, oh my God, they change color. This is the smallest package that we have left and it feels like it is a um, an acorn. This is from CM from Montana. Dear Milo, I have been watching your videos since the beginning. I have found them very interesting. Anyway, I saw that you like little skeletons. So I sent you a little skeleton head. I got it a long time ago, but I had multiple and I hope you like it. Sincerely, Cameron. P.S. When writing this, my dogs were bothering me. Their names are Puggy, Betsy, and Olaf. Puggy is 10, Betsy is three, and Olaf, Betsy's son, is one. Cameron, to you and your um, wonderful critters, I want to say thank you very much. I hope that your dogs are doing well. Give them a big scratch in the head for me. Um, and now let's have a look at the skull uh, that you have sent, which you and I are now going to have matching ones. <gasps> it's adorable, look at that. Can you see it? Can you see it? Hey, can you see it? Thank you very much, I appreciate that. All right, um, we are down to the last three here, so let's just work our way up uh, in, in order of size. Um, so we got something here from uh, Kaylin, also from Massachusetts. Good to see some of my fellow townies sending me stuff. What do you got for me? Is this a 
What the fuck? Dear Milo, I was very excited to learn that you were accepting fan mail since I am a fan who likes to send mail. All right, you got a good sense of humor. I like this already. Every video of yours never fails to make me laugh and I feel inspired. I want to go into either entomology, microbiology, or paleontology. I often watch your videos while drawing or working and it fuels my love for the mysterious world we live in. Thank you. Uh, and the tiny uh, satchel is a bug sticker and two shell fossils. It's not a book or a, cra or a crazy cool, uh, or a crazy cool find, but I hope you will like them. Thank you again, Milo, for everything, and I look forward to your next video. I was also surprised to find out you live in the next state over. Hello from Massachusetts. You will be also very happy to know that I actually grew up in Massachusetts. I grew up uh, just outside of Boston. Maybe entomology is the right path. I, I'm seeing if you had to go with a sticker and you sent a bug, I like to think there's a little bit of a calling there, which I have a lot of respect for. Uh, I think bugs are terrifying, especially if they are bigger than my thumbnail. Uh, absolutely the fuck not. Uh, as for the rest of these things, oh my God, look at that. Little shell, millions of years to end up in Rhode Island. Oh yeah, these are great. Look at these. Can you see them? Can you see him? Next we got something from Austin, uh, from Kansas. Wow, little pieces of bubble wrap. That's really nice of you, dude. Obsolete electronics. I was, you know, I was gonna say when I was opening this uh, box that I thought it looked like it could be a VHS tape. It's definitely not a VHS tape, but I th still think it's really funny that it says Elite Obsolete Electronics on it. <gasps> no way. I... It's an artifact. Oh my god, it's an artifact. I used to have one of these when I was a kid. Yeah. That's so cool. That's actually really, really neat. It's like the old iPod. That's so cool. There was, there was a game on this, um, on one of them that I used to play that was like a little like tank game where you'd move back and forth and have to like hit things coming down at you or something like that. And I guess we are on to the final package of the day, which comes uh, from David from Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh my god, it's another ferret. <laughs> to open it. Jesus, David, you really, you, you spent all of the uh, largeness of this on the packaging and not on the writing segment, did you? Hi, Milo. Great stuff you're doing. Keep it up. Here's a couple of books and a box of the world's best chalk, according to some people on the internet. Best of luck, David. Oh man, there are some books in here. Where's the chalk? I want to try the chalk. Oh my God, I've heard of this. It's like this Japanese chalk that I saw like a short documentary about at some point that I heard that they stopped producing it. Look at this. It's like a really fancy chalk. Oh my God. Holy shit. Well, I really didn't think I would have so much chalk after this. Let's have a look at the books we got. Someone let a dog loose in the hallway. The Rise and Fall of Ancient Egypt by Toby Wilkinson. Looks like an actual book, not to name names here. In this landmark work, one of the world's most renowned Egyptologists tells the epic story of this great civilization from its birth as the first nation state to its final absorption into the Roman Empire. I cannot wait to give this a flip through. It even has some pictures in it. We got this guy who's, I don't know, getting hit in the head with something, pretty neat. And last but not least, The Forest of Kings, the untold story of the ancient Maya. Now this is something that I will definitely be reading very soon. I am big into uh, new world history. Oh my God, yeah, look at that. It's got like real archeological uh, illustrations in it with like site plans and stuff like that. Uh, David, thank you very much for that. Those are wonderful. Let me add them up to to the board here so we can have a nice big last hurrah. There we go. Uh, well, that was a ton of fun. Um, I want to thank everyone who uh, sent something to this. Uh, I would love to do this again. So if you have anything uh, which you would like to send to me, you can send it to Milo Rossi, 40 Montgomery Street, number 1746, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. 02682, as you can't really see there. And now I get to go through the uh, wonderful adventure of cleaning up this giant pile of trash on the floor um, and probably giving the boxes to my ferrets to play with for a little bit. I would like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. All of your names will be in the credits of this video. And I would also like to thank everyone who decided to contribute and send something to me. I'll, all of these things will be getting a place of honor somewhere in my room. And I think I'm going to have to start a couple new bookshelves. Remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and most importantly, remember Lilith traced random shapes across his skin, bumpy and rough from the scars that decorated it, hot to the touch. Damn, I'm gonna have to start this from the beginning. <laughs>